Hey guys, um, so today I want to tell you all about you need to know about uh, API 510 uh, registration and how to apply, what is the cost uh, using the API website so you have a better uh, perspective of uh, how to apply and what is it. Uh, as you can see, I'm showing the API website, uh, individual certification program section here and uh, you got uh, the icons here which are uh, schedule and fees or schedule and fees certifications apply exam scoring and frequently asked question uh, this question uh, this exam also is being uh, can be done remotely so if you want to know more uh, you can click here and uh, find out uh, what is the requirements it's basically the same as in person uh, there is just a couple of uh, more restrictions. So uh, once you choose the, the remote proctoring or remote exams, uh, so you select a slot with Prometric, uh, you should have a laptop or desktop which has got a, a camera uh, so they can watch you, the invigilator or the examiner, and uh, you have to turn around your uh, laptop so there is nothing on your table. They can see that there is nothing there. Uh, they do the ID check as uh, in person, and you should have uh, a valid government issued photo ID. That uh, can be a military ID, a driving license, or a passport, and it should be valid. Be careful that it should be valid. If it's not valid, then they just uh, uh, cancel the exam, and it's a no show. So you have to reapply again and pay the rescheduling fee, which is as good as being a failure. So. That might take another six months to attend the exam and pay the $300 fees. Um, and the restriction is that uh, in, in person, they will give you a like a pocket five calculator uh, to do your calculation. Obviously, there is on your desktop, you can see a calculator that you can use during the exam as well. And uh, they will give you a, a few uh, a green size, A4 size paper and uh, uh, pencil, a couple of pencils and pens, so you can do your calculation. And here uh, you cannot have access to any paper on remote exam, so you have to use the desktop calculator, which they will provide you. Uh, and there is no pen and paper. Uh, you make note of it. So that's the restriction. And during the exam, if you are doing remote, you are not allowed to leave the room. Nobody is allowed to enter the room that you are using for the exam. That can be your home or your office, uh, and uh, uh, it would be the same security check. So every time you leave the room, you come back, uh, you have to show your ID, you have to be qualified, uh, uh, sort of uh, checked again. Uh, same as in person. Okay, let's go to uh, the uh, certification itself. So if you click on certification, there is a drop down window here. And the first one is uh, API 510. And because today we are talking about API 510, we'll go through this. Uh, so you can see by default, there is an exam information here. Um, and it says what the API 510 is for, uh, and what it helps you to do what. And it's also ANSI approved, that's American National Standard Institute. So recently API got that. And they are also got certification from ISO certification 17024 uh, for this uh, exam. Uh, as you go down, you can see two papers, publication effectivity sheet, which is uh, there are two revisions. One is up to May 2022, which is passed. And the other one is September 2022 till May 2023. So because we are in September, and if you are doing the, your exam this month, so you have to follow the second publication effective sheet. The same thing goes for body of knowledge. So let's, uh, I'll explain what is the difference between publication effective sheet and body of knowledge, but I want to give you an overall view, what is this? Uh, so publication, uh, the next one, as you can see, is a seven and a half hour exam. This includes two hours, 45 minutes for closed book, 45 minute break and three hours, 70. 45 minutes for open book. 
total of 170 questions, 140 are scored, remaining are pretest questions. Uh, and they are not scored and they are shuffled together. So you have to do uh, the all 170 because you don't know which one is scored and which one is not. So on average, you got one and a half minute for uh, close book per question and you got three minutes, 45 seconds on open book. That means you should have uh, maintain a constant pace for answering question. Uh, that is 40 questions per hour for closed book and 16 questions per hour for open book to uh, do it just on time. But obviously, you know, you need to be a bit faster because you want to review the question. Some of them you flagged it off and uh, you want to you wanna have a second thought about that. You might. Uh, the no negative marking, so answer all the question. And uh, at the end, uh, click on the review uh, button. So you see that all questions are answered. Any question unanswered, they will be unticked. Uh, there is a pre-test question, frequently asked question. So, uh, uh, so you can read this. This is useful to know if you have any queries, you can understand how the exam is held. There is an exam tutorial that you also will see during the exam. Uh, and we'll go through this. It's better to, to look uh, to look at this before the exam because uh, there's a 10 minutes allowance there and uh, or you end it earlier. The exam tutorial, it practically tells you how the buttons work and uh, what facility is got. And we'll go through this one by one. Uh, but first, let's go to uh, schedule and fees. So this exam is done three times a year. So you see here there is 2022. Um, so if you look at this exam, it's the first one was this year was on January 510 and the second one was on May to June 3, May 13. So you can see there is a three weeks window you can select. Uh, once you select the window during your creator account, you pay the fees you uh, and then uh, you uh, provide two references. They will, uh, it should be a company email for references and the references would, uh, once they uh, um, verify your experience, the API will send you an email authorization and, uh, um, and then you can uh, select a slot uh, within these windows that you have selected. So during the, application you need to select a slot and one of these is slot so this is slot has passed and this one is uh, the next slot remaining is september 9 to 30th 2022 and uh, the deadline was 8 july so this is also passed and so if you go to 2023 you can see that the same slots are here uh, slightly different from so the next one possibly you can do is uh, uh, from January 6 to 27. So you have to select this slot. And then once you get the email authorization, you can uh, specify the, the date, uh, time slot with the Prometric. And Prometric is subcontracted by API to do the exam. Uh, on behalf of API, and it can be, as I said, in person, you go to a pro select a Prometric test center closest to your place of work or home or you do, you choose the remote proctoring where you can do from the comfort of your office or home. As you can see here, uh, the deadline is November 4. So by November 4, you should get this, but we suggest you, if you want to attend this exam, you can, uh, you do right now or as early as possible. So don't wait for the application deadline uh, because Prometric works on first come first serve basis. Uh, previously, it was a two weeks window and people had difficulty. Now they increase it to three weeks and uh, so people can have uh, uh, able to select a slot with parametric. And uh, so if for any reason you're too late for selecting your slots uh, and you cannot find near your place, uh, it might be in some other countries and you cannot go there or some other city, uh, then it, that is uh, as good as failure. That means you have to reschedule, pay uh, the fee and uh, $300 and it's as good as failure. So uh, you better uh, get the 
uh, API authorization email and apply for it well before this deadline. Now, if you want to, you can also select, say, right now for June 2nd, or you can select the next slot, which is uh, September 8 to 29. Okay. So, but these are the deadlines. Now, let's see what are the fees. Uh, for the core exam, API 510 being one of them, uh, the fee is $940. And as you can see, there are two fees, non-member fee and member fee. Now, API does not give individual membership. So that means your company should be a member of the API. Not many companies are, there are probably four or 5,000 companies in the world who are API member. So if your company is not an API member, uh, yourself as an employee have to pay the full fee. And most of people end up paying the full fee and so this is the initial certification. Uh, once you pass the exam, every three years you have to recertify and you pay $730 for recertification and showing that 20% of the time you have been working as an API inspector uh, and uh, provide references. There is no exam. But after six years, you need to have a quiz, which is 25 question and you can pose it up to four, uh, three times, and uh, you can do it within four hours. If you fail once the quiz, you can do it once again. If you fail the second time, you have to uh, do the initial exam, pay the full fees. Uh, for rescheduling, for any reason, if you cannot attend the exam within the slot, if you don't show up during the exam, if you don't have a proper um, ID card, which is a valid government photo ID, uh, if it's not valid or anything, and you refuse entry, it's called as a no-show, um, then you have to pay, uh, reschedule it and pay $300. Um, there is a late application fee in case this is for when um, you want to recertify yourself and uh, you can do it up to 90 days before the expiry date and up to 90 days after the expiry date, but subject to a late application fee of $150. So these are the fees. Now, let's go to, uh, you can click on this button and start applying, which means uh, it will take you uh, that which one you want to apply. You click on this, it's very easy to go, and then you create an um, account, and then you upload your uh, uh, credentials uh, for as a prerequisite for the certifications. Most of them, they need a prerequisite in terms of experience and qualifications. You provide two references, you pay the fees, they will contact the references. Always better to sit with your references and tell them, coordinate with them. And it just take a minute to verify your experience. And then once you receive e email authorization, you can uh, use that email authorization and the link to Prometric to select the slot uh, and the location. And if it's remote, then you can use remote. Um, so, you can there is a lot of good information about exam and scoring how is it done here uh, and then let's go to certification because this is where uh, there's lots of good information here uh, so if we uh, let's see what will happen during the exam uh, so you have this exam tutorial uh, that you will see just before the exam it's a 10 minutes to tutorial and that, that tell you uh, what are the how the buttons work, uh, what is it, uh, 170 questions, and you have 390 minutes in total, uh, plus 45 minutes break. Now remember, uh, when you do the first open book comp happens, and then you have the 45 minutes break. Um, and then uh, after 45 minutes break, you can go for lunch and come back and do the uh, open book, uh, which is uh, three hours, 45 minutes. Uh, so in total is six and a half hours plus 45 minutes, which is almost seven and a half hours exam. Uh, now, if you go for a break and it, for any reason you are late, the this open book starts automatically after 45 minutes break. So you be careful that you come back before the 45 minutes break, exp you know, expires. Um, because uh, that's coming off your time. Now, for any time you go to toilet or use it, going fill up your water bottle for any reason, you need to check out, <clears throat> tell the invigilator, and uh, then come back and check in and 
go through the security again, identification check. So all is coming off your time, or if you want to make any comments on the any question, okay. So uh, try to use your time wisely and uh, try to come back to the desk, uh, um, you know, four or five minutes before the your know, forty-five minutes break starts, because this is going to automatically start your open book after the break, regardless whether you are present at your desk or not. Um, so this is how you see the questions. There is this question, like here you're attempting uh, number one, and <clears throat> this is the time remaining, it shows on the top, and which question you're attempting, and uh, if it's uh, this long question, it's a click the button to continue or go down, and you can do next question, and you can mark it, and uh, you know, go to the next question and continue the test, or go jump between questions, and uh, here you can uh, just click this and finish it. Um, so you should see your name here, right? Um, you should see the time here and you should see the question like this, okay? And uh, uh, there is a limited translation for Chinese or other languages, but it, uh, in case you do not, uh, your English is not your first language. Uh, So this is showing the time remaining. Uh, so you be careful that you answer all questions before the time lapses. And uh, because uh, there is no negative marking, so make sure you answer all the questions. Um, and if there is a long question, it says this page requires scrolling, so you need to go down and see the whole question. And uh, if you want to use a calculator, there is an icon there. You can use the uh, click on this and you do your calculation on the calculator and then you can remove it by clicking the X button. Uh, so you can navigate through the course, uh, the exam from one question to another question. Okay. As I said before, and if there is a multi-choice, you can, uh, like once you click on that, um, left click and it, that means you have selected the answer. If you do a right click, uh, uh, or that answer you want to strike it off so you want to concentrate on other questions okay and uh, there is no multiple uh, choice normally so uh, and there is no most of the time there is no you haven't seen any drag and drop here like this now flagging question it's uh, green so if you click on this it turns red if you want to flag off question and then uh, any question in doubt you can flag it off and then just review the uh, flagged off question at the end uh, so if you want to change your things uh, there are other options like highlighting things but it's not very useful in my opinion but it might you know if you want to like sort of highlight it uh, so just uh, click on this and drag it, uh, and then it will highlight the text if you want to zoom in, sort of. And as I said, striking it off, do the right click on the question and it strikes it off, as you see here. Okay. So, these arrows up, down, and then the PDF viewer, uh, I'll show you how this is. Uh, so. If you do you click on the PDF viewer, uh, you'll see uh, all the open book thing. And if you click on that, you see the uh, list here. Okay, uh, the uh, uh, table of contents. So you can go and you know click on that if you know where to have to go. So here you need to have a good navigation skill. So you should know where you to look for between all this that they've provided you, um, the reference documents. And then once you click on that, you need to also know which section you have to go in. Yeah. So I would advise you to practice this with the actual PDF version. And uh, so in the exam, you're not short of time. You can make a comment here, but it's coming off your time for any questions. And that's it, pretty much sums it up. And at the end, you know, 
you can filter it by attempted and attempted. So if you have not, if you have flagged it off, this shows that you flagged it off. You can only check the flagged off question or all the questions. So anything in green means you have answered it. Anything in uh, black means you haven't answered it. You need to answer it. No negative marking. So please answer all. And then at the end, you say, yeah, I want to, uh, you can say finish section. And then it again asks you that once, uh, uh, once again, if you want to finish this section. So just to make sure that you have not uh, clicked it by accident, because once you click the second time, then the exam finishes for you ahead of the time. Or when the time runs out, it automatically, your exam is deemed completed. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to tell you is the publication effectivity sheet. Publication effectivity sheet, uh, you can see here anything in red is uh, will be uh, the revised one compared to the last version so uh, you need to study api 571 i tell you which section you have to study then 572 the entire document 576 577 now here you see the red there is a change in revision so it is showing in red and then 77 78 Asthma section 5, only article 1, 2, 6, 7, and 23. Asthma section 8, uh, introduction, U, U, G, general requirements, welding requirements, carbon steel, and appendices 1, 2, 6, 8, and 12. And section 9, uh, only for welding. And uh, you do, and then the, this is a new revision came in applicable from next exam, uh, from September exam and on bars, and it's PCC two repair of pressure equipment and piping. Okay, so this this is the the publication effective sheet tells you which revision of which reference documents and recommended practice and codes and standards you have to study. Now, what is the body of knowledge is that. Practically also tells you the list, gives you the list without uh, revision, but tells you it's a very, they got very useful information and uh, they tell you, so they give you the reference list without revision and then they come by here and they say, okay, what you expected to know. For example, thickness measurement, inspection interval, vessel integrity, and they also refer to the uh, code or the recommended practice. So anything here that has been noted, you read it twice, okay? And uh, joint efficiency, you should know, a static head, you should know, and it tells you in detail what you should know from a static head or joint efficiency or internal pressure. And external pressure, you know, look, you got to know UG28, what is it all about? Not too much. It says it, this thing will not be required to perform external calculation. Pressure testing. UG, these are from ASP section 8, so you should know. Impact testing and weld size, uh, so UW. Nozzle reinforcement, you should not know, you do not know this, but you are just not need to know the, the concept, key concept of reinforcement, okay? You do not to, need to know the, the, the detailed version like a design engineer. And then weld procedure review, they will give you one simple WPS and most of the questions are very basic and there will be one welding procedure and it tell you, you know, uh, what it is. So only this SMAW, GTA or this are used, that the four procedures, uh, building process are used and uh, uh, then uh, the general requirement, building requirements, uh, joint typical joints definition weld size etc and then you come back to uh, api 577 uh, you should do overall knowledge of that welding inspection non-destructive intervention as my section uh, five so as you can see here on all articles you should know the scope responsibilities calibration definition and uh, again you can see here that the scope um, type allowable density on RT, records, location markers, and again, the procedure and records. 
so the very basic of RT, UT, MT, PT, VT, you should know, magnetic particle, article 7. And then there would be some practical questions uh, specific about uh, organization, certification requirements, all this, you know, give you a knowledge of overall knowledge of these topics. And uh, about the pressure vessel inspection code, as you can see, um, API 570, uh, you should know the entire document, API 571, damage mechanism, you only need to know about this very basic um, damage mechanisms and corrosions. And 572, 76, 77, 78, it's an entire document subject to testing, so that we will tell you, highlight it in our um, e-learning course, uh, what is required. Uh, and then PCC2, there are only these articles you need to know. So I think I covered everything. If you have any question, you can always come to our website and uh, uh, and read our first and second module for free and uh, also try our quizzes, okay? So you can go to our courses, API, ICP preparatory course. We have also issued other videos uh, about this. You can read our first and second model for free. Uh, this course uh, uh, got three options, mock exam package, premium mock exam, which is mock exam plus uh, highlights of publication effective sheet and full course, which is all the lessons uh, plus premium mock exam. And this has got these 60 CPD credit hours accredited and uh, it comes with eight hours of video 208 lectures, 1300 questions, 3500 flashcards, pass first time or re free renewal, 120 days for 24 7 course access. And you can see at the course content here and study first and second module for free or try our free quiz. Thank you.